today we're starting with Mavericks F-14A Tomcat by Ravel from the movie Top Gun. So I have already opened this up. There's the instructions. I have already gone through page by page to see what colors need to be painted on each piece. That will save a little bit of time. I did not like the very dark gray color that Ravel chose to make this thing. So I painted it. And I painted it a slightly lighter gray. So that's the original color there, and that's the color that I painted it. You can see it's just a little bit lighter of a gray. And so I think that's more accurate to the movie color. The, the gray that they molded this in is just a little too dark. And so I took these pieces off of the sprues and I spray painted them. Normally, if I'm doing some kind of spray painting that takes some kind of technique or something like that, that's not normal, I'll show you. But for just spray painting the big plain pieces like this, anybody knows how to spray paint good enough, right? As long as you don't go crazy with it and make a whole bunch of runs or something. Um, yeah, it's fairly straightforward. So. We've got this with some missiles, some landing gear pieces. There's the cockpit right there. Usually on these plane models, they want you to build the cockpit first. There's the nose cone. Let's see here. Some more landing gear wheels. What else? What else? This look like, I'm not sure what those pieces are, but we'll find out. Missile. Landing gear covers. More landing gear. This looks like a piece from one of the seats, so we'll just keep that in there for now. Tail fins. And we have the decals, and there's the decal specific to Maverick. And I'm not sure if he was 114 or 104. Um, worry about that when we get there, right? So let's put this aside for now and see where did I put the instructions? There we go. I know we're not going to need this yet. Or any of these things. So. Uh, where were we here? Okay. We have our color chart right here. All the pieces and showing us the pieces that are not going to be used in this build. And sure enough, we start off with the cockpit and all those details. Now, what they want us to start off with is piece number 12. So, where are we? Usually it would be like an A12 or B12, but they just listed as 12. So this should be interesting because there's number 12 and that don't look nothing like it. So I'll just have to find it. I'm going to have to take this off anyway, so where's my snips? 
start by taking this off. pieces for the seat, but uh, we'll get to those in a minute. Let's find the instrument panel. There we go. Two instrument panels. check something before I get too far into this to make sure my actually streaming live actually streaming live streaming looks live. like it looks like it okay let's get some music going here it's yeah, a little boring without me. Okay, so what color do we need to do? Dark gray. Put some gray down there. So I gotta do it. dark gray. That's light. That's light. Let's find some dark gray. kind of the same color, the same darker gray. I might just leave it. I could just leave it. Or maybe they want to be even darker. There's a color that they're actually calling for is anthracite. Anthracite is kind of a really dark gray, like almost black. At least from my Google search, I don't actually have a color called anthracite, but <coughs> it doesn't really matter, does it? Not really. If I paint it this color, it will be a little darker. Yeah, I think... What color it is? No. I didn't go through that, obviously. What is that? Medium gray. medium gray. So I'm going to leave this. I'm going to call this medium gray. There's a notch taken out of it here. Yeah. Something like this. About a year ago, I built the Tamiya F14 Tomcat, the 148 scale, 
and you know it's one of the higher priced models that Tamiya makes in that scale and so I I waited for years before actually buying it and, and building it and I did that last year and I was very impressed with Tamiya's quality on it and uh, and the fit and everything and how it all went together it was very very well done so I can understand why Tamiya prices that one pretty high just because a lot went into the engineering of that model and it was very well done and I think that model even I, I could be wrong but I think it came out before the Top Gun movie ever came out So, I think I am going to paint this just because there's little, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, um, right there, see that lighter part there? That's where it's like something almost took a chunk out of it, or tried to, before I even opened the box. So. I think I am going to put a coat of paint on this just to just to hide stuff like that. Should I use my darker gray or my lighter gray? I'll use this one. And I'll paint that up. <laughs> This kit did come with some decals for the instrument panels. I don't know if I need to sand off all the knobs and stuff first to get the decals to fit nice or not. take a look at it later when it comes to actually doing these two parts. Um, just because actually concerned that uh, I might not have been able to stream today because uh, we had quite the windstorm yesterday. We had wind and hail and rain and all kinds of stuff and we heard about power outages all over the place. Um, we never got any power as far as I know. The power never went out here so we're very fortunate. You can see the color that I'm painting it, it's just a little bit lighter. Oh, maybe you can't, it's hard to say. Hard to tell in the camera light. Maybe this one? If we get the glare off of it, maybe. Yeah, I turn it around here. Nah, it's too hard to tell on the camera. It's just a little bit lighter shade of gray. I don't have 50 different shades. Okay, so that's painted. 
All right. <coughs> now let's do this. This thing. Looks like they've actually left a couple of panels on this pretty flat. So obviously intending for the decals to go on there. So I got the other piece still on here, so it's gonna be a little easier paint. since I've already got it out. Um, let's see, number 17. That is not on here. It's a little bit confusing with, uh, since it just says number 17 doesn't actually see what sprue it's on. So, straight off of the bat, I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. Black, red, brown, I guess. Got this piece, and they want me to paint just this little back piece right there. That's going to be this color. Again, I'm not sure if you can tell the difference on the camera. Other than it's a little shiny there now. Very subtle difference there. Just a little bit. Funny enough, they don't want me painting it all the way down each side. But I do want half of that painted the same. this they want brown is it brown no 
almost black, it's the anthracite, and then that part light, medium, this part here, medium gray. So that's fine. <clears throat> what about the middle, this middle one? They want... That's it for this color. Oh, what about the joystick control? It's gotta be in here somewhere. As I dump over my paints. That was fantastic. Not in here. clean this out and I'll be right back. want me to put a bunch of decals on this thing. So I guess I will do that. They want it on this other one too. So how dry is it? Pretty dry. I guess I could do the decals. Where's my little decal sheet? There we go. All these guys here. Thirty-seven and thirty-eight. There's thirty-seven. There's thirty-eight. There's thirty-seven. Over here. Okay. So they want 
happy to put decals for all the instrumentation. Completely. But to do that, I need to sand down or cut off all the little knobs on these panels. Otherwise, the decal just will it look like crap, right? They have the decals there, the complete panel, just put that down there and done. And that makes life a lot easier. Um, absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. So, I think I will. I want to take a closer look at these. Because maybe I'd have to do the same. Yeah. These are not smooth at all. It's all for putting the decals on. So, let's just see here. Yeah. Complete. Everywhere, everything. So I should smooth everything down on this with a file and get rid of all the little knobs and dials. Let's see, for example, number 40. Number 40 is going to go there, yeah. It just completely replaces the dials on the right there. So I'm going to get my little file out. And I will start on that. I think I'm going to change my glasses. <laughs> so that I don't have to keep swapping them every time I want to look at something. first before painting. I wasn't quite expecting to paint this thing like that completely. So that's not my fault. Up about it, which I don't I'll leave that to others. So, the file that I'm using is just a it's kind of a combination file, it's got three sharp edges here, and then this side is rounded. There, so I can do nice round parts as well as flat. And it's just a generic file, it's nothing special. It's good enough for filing down some rougher parts. Gets the job done. Thank you. 
almost done. You can still kind of see traces of them, but it's smooth enough that the deck cross can cover it. I don't know if you could see the detail before when I held it up to the camera. If I hold it up now, you're not really going to see much at all. <laughs> And that's kind of the point, right? You know, that's, why, that's why we're doing this. So the decals have a nice flat surface to stick to. <clears throat> and this one is a little bit different. Decal 44 is going to go here. Okay. And 45. So that one goes there. This one's got a little bit taller knobs on it. Might take a little too much for the file. And then we have that up there. 46. Is that whole piece all the way around there? I've seen guys paint all these knobs with toothpicks, uh, with super tiny brushes, and you know, the model builders I see on YouTube, they're so talented and clearly been just doing it for years and they're professionals, and even with just little drops of paint on the knobs that they do they look so fantastic and real and that's something you know that that's just a level i'm never going to get to not only because it's beyond me now it's i am too old to even start thinking about trying to get into the professional model business so it's just not something I can put my 100% of my effort to, towards. And that's just the way it is. And that's okay. So everyone has their own skill set and skill level. You know, when I was a kid, trying to paint the dials like this, yeah, it just come out as a big blob. So you either use too big of a brush or too much paint on the brush or a combination of both. And then I'd hide it by gluing the canopy closed. So you never really get to see it anyway. It doesn't matter if I did a shitty job. Right? So, and that's what I used to do. Okay, another instrument panel, filed down nice and smooth, and we'll move on to these four, these four here, one, two, three, four, and we'll file these down. Thank you. 
to to level under this hair and no forty eight. This one I don't have to find everything on it. Okay. There's the I think it's the thrust control on this side and I don't have to sand that off because it's kind of a little bump that goes like this, right? I think it's the, or the you know, the throttle lever that goes like that or forward, and, you know, to increase and decrease the thrust. It's the throttle, you know, you know what I mean. Take up the entire panel. Let's try this. We can just scrape on. It's a little less filing. dish and cut the decals off. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Start with that one. So we'll do 
this one first. In the meantime, I'll get number 38 right now. So I need 38 and 40. That's these two guys. just like a touch warmer than lukewarm um, just because the decals they seem to come off the, the sheet faster so that was just about ready so I will put these two in Said, I like to use warm water that's just a just a touch um, warmer than lukewarm um, but in my haste to get this done for the stream um, I didn't bother waiting for the water to warm up I just took it straight out of the tap as it was so it might take a little bit longer than normal for these to be ready to go that's okay. There's a piece there. The mistake I made building the tank, um, I put the decals on and I didn't let them dry. I just continued on the next step, started painting, the, doing the wash on the hull, and I inadvertently touched the decals and they kept on moving and then I actually ripped one um, because it was like half dry and the other half moved and I touched it and pulled and, and one came completely off and I hadn't realized it sitting on my pant leg um, yeah so I don't recommend really manipulating the model too much when you've applied the decals um, probably it's best to just say okay I'm done for the day and leave it until the next day and the decals are all dry and then continue on. Now, that being said, that one's finally ready to go. Um, because of where these ones are going, I don't necessarily have to do that. Because There's not going to be too much uh, manipulation with these once the decals are on. There's the first one. How are you two doing? You're not ready yet. So what's after those two? And then underneath them, we mark 39 and 41. Okay. So this will be next. To go right underneath them. Two and forty 
doesn't uh, it takes a long time but if I was in a hurry I would have just painted it painted black put up silver put a bunch of little dots all over them and call it a day right but uh, it's one of the few times I've actually chosen to use the decals I would like to try one time doing those photo etched parts. I've never done those and from what I've seen online and guys using them, they look pretty cool, um, but it seems to be really specific for you have to have this version of this kit and use this uh, photo etched kit, right? And, and they go together. Um, and you know, being from where I am, it's it's hard to find models that are high quality, that are economical. Um, it doesn't take much to for models to get up in the close to a hundred dollar range, and then you buy a photo etching kit that's only for the cockpit, and that's it. And then that costs you another seventy five bucks. So then you're close to two hundred dollars into a model kit that. And it's quite the investment, right? And yeah, if you're not a professional and you're not making any money at it, it's hard to justify that, right? Okay, those are ready to go. So I'm going to put these in now. I've got a pretty cool, at least in my opinion, model kit coming. Um, might be here in a week or two. And uh, it's a model of one of my most favorite uh, anime ships ever. And it's very expensive. Um, but it's something I've really wanted a model kit of for many years even as a kid um, before they even made one I used to think how cool it would be if they ever did and uh, well they did and unknown to me it's been out for a few years now and so I bought one, got picked, ordered it on Amazon. Should be here soon. But as I said, it's very expensive. So it's just one of those things like, hey, I know it's expensive. I have no way of justifying the cost, but I've been waiting for 20 years for one and uh, I want it and so I bit the bullet and I ordered one and uh, I'll show it to you when uh, when I get it but uh, yeah hmm. how are you doing it here Nowhere near ready. <laughs> Not even budging. Just gonna make sure I got these oriented right.
That's better. Just about ready. So I will put these two in. <clears throat> Sometimes these decals, they, they have a little bit too much of a <clears throat> clear edge around them, and you have to trim it just to get it right. That's going to be the case in this piece, this top center one. It, it needs to go into a slot for the instrument panel. And I've got a feeling it's not going to be fitting all that great. So I'm going to trim that. should be ready to go now. Yep. And as I said in my last one, putting the decals on the tank the decal adhesive that I had used once before but felt like it didn't really do anything. It didn't really make the decal stick any better. But on the tank it actually seemed to work pretty good. adhesive? I'm going to say yes and no. There are some model kits out there. The decals are just shitty. And they don't stick at all. <clears throat> and there are other model kits that the decals are just a breeze to apply and they stay forever. I think it's really dependent on the specific kit, on whether you're going to need that stuff or not. Um, and it doesn't seem to matter, like even a... I sound like I'm, uh, I'm getting uh, paid by Tamiya, but I'm not. But the quality of Tamiya models, I find, are just really nice, high quality. The fit is always really nice and everything like that. But even on the Tamiya models, the decals, if that thing has been sitting on the shelf for five years, it's like something just deteriorates in their glue or whatever, and the decal doesn't stay very well, right? So maybe that's just something that's dependent on the age of the model and how long it's been on a shelf. I don't know. I suppose if the model is a, a new enough one, maybe that's not an issue. I really don't know. And even like, this is, take this kit for example. Um, I don't know how long this has been on the shelf. I don't know how long it's been sitting there or when it was manufactured. Um, so, 
I do know this. Ravel's quality on their fitment is... You can't compare it to Tamiya. Um, just in test fitting, I'll show the upper and lower fuselage. Um, just in test fitting these to see how it all lines up and matches. Um, that's all lined up there now, nice and perfect. Okay, in the notches and everything like that. And this doesn't doesn't go together right, and it's not even lined up. You can see that notch there, and it doesn't fit quite right. I have that this wing together now, and this doesn't line up. I don't know if you can see the difference all the way back here. It doesn't line up. I have to really... It's going to be a big challenge to get this. Even from to get this piece here is actually the top is overlapping the bottom. So if I pull that out, now it's not. And now look what it's doing at the nose. See, it's to me a models. I don't have issues like that with. Um, but obviously with this one, I will. And I'll have to deal with that. But not today. Which gives me a lot of time to think about what needs to be done. And so I'm okay with that. I suppose I could watch a couple of other YouTube videos on guys building this particular model and see what solutions they came up with on the fitment of that. Because that's a bit of an issue. I don't normally like to use a whole bunch of putty and stuff like that and fill in those gaps. I'm not, well admittedly, I'm not that great at it. And so, it, um, it just, I gotta change my glasses here. Bring on a heat gun. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not something, that's not a technique I really want to use. Heat gun. This one I can put aside and let those dry a little bit. We'll move on to the next one. Let's see here. We want 44 and 45. Forty-five. 
There's any paint I need to do on that one. Yes, there is. I need green. It's going to be a, kind of a bright green. So, which one am I going to do here? This green? This one's probably I think that'll work. screens that are on the first one. In the Tamiya version of this, they have uh, nice little green decals to use as the screens and of course that makes them nice and shiny and whatever. It gives them that, uh, like it, it looks like it's glass and that's pretty cool. But at the same time, the Tamiya version doesn't give you the decals like these to put on the panels instead of painting them. The Tamiya makes you paint all the knobs and dials and stuff. <clears throat> Which again is not a criticism, it's just that's what the way they went with it. Where Ravel is giving you the option of either painting them all yourself or using the decals. <clears throat> and that's fine. Ready? 
Okay. So this one. challenge to fit exactly where it's supposed to go. And it's not too much of a headache. It's okay. All right. How about you? You ready to go? Oh, you need a minute. <clears throat> so let's see if you can see what the decals look like on there. Let's we'll see if you can tell. Yeah, you can see they're shiny. But it's tough. What about if I do this on this one? See a little bit. See those two squares in the middle, those are what's going to be painted green. And this one's got a great big circle in the middle of it that's going to be green. And then that square block down on the bottom, yeah, that's going to be black. This one feels like it might be ready to go now. Those two are done. Next are these four. And they're going to go 48, 48, 49, 50, 51. Do two at a time. some water to drink and I will be right back. All right, 
<clears throat> I am back. All right, let's see how we're doing here. It's ready to go. No. <laughs> That's a hard no. I really want you to work fast. After putting these two um, instrument clusters in, you basically put it into the hole, into the hole, and uh, or I'm sorry, not hole, fuselage. But um, yeah, and then they want you to assemble the seat. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be easier to put the seat in it? and then put it in the fuselage? In most cases, yes. But they might have a reason for it. So I'll do what they want. I will conform. I will obey. And that's what I'll do. So, come on, It'll take forever. We'll get the parts for the seat ready. And so, let's see these guys. Since both seats are identical, so that's going to make life a little bit easier. for there. I didn't send quite enough of there. Off of there. So what I'm going to do is 
expecting the water. So I'm going to file this down. Definitely want to give this another coat of paint and touch it up before I put it actually in the fuselage. Now, There we go. These panels are done. So I'll try and show you here. There you go. So I do want to paint that, but I'm going to have to do that later. I want to let these dry completely before I start painting on them because I'm going to be going right against the edges of the decals with my paintbrush and so I don't want to screw them up. So I do want to assemble the seat now. I have to get that one little piece out of this though. It's floating around here. Here it is. pieces for the seats. Now they want me to paint that. What color is that? That's brown. So they want these centered parts to be brown and then the sides to be black. Is that brown out here? It doesn't look like it. Great. 
kind of a, um, I don't know what you call it, flashing? It's like the extra little edge of the, the pieces of that extra little extremely thin edge like that got left behind in the, from the mold and they pulled them apart like the mold wasn't completely sealed together and so a little of the plastic seeps out and then when they pull the mold apart that little bit of plastic that it seeped out is still on the piece um, I get that quite a bit with the uh, Ravel models um, it's just it's like it, unless you like if you don't know exactly what that piece is supposed to be or what it looks like it would be very easy to just leave that on there painted be none the wiser are done. I think I'll just, I don't know, we'll see how these go together first to see whether I want to paint these before assembly or just paint them once it's assembled.
if I trim away the excess plastic, it'll fit better. Who knows, right? Yeah, I'll see this one. Maybe it came off better, I guess. That's better, yeah. I think what I want to do is I'm going to paint the inside edge where that touches and then do that on both. <clears throat> so that I don't have to try and get my brush in those tiny little cracks later. So, I need my brown, this brown, and I need black. So I'll do the brown first. so much for this, it's going from brown to black. <clears throat> I just want to do this edge. doing the edge for now and then I'll glue it together <clears throat> and, and I won't have to worry about getting in this tiny tiny little seam um, where it connects to the center cushion part contrast between building an airplane model and building the tank, or at least the tank that I built. Um, the tank didn't require any camouflage or anything like that, so it really hardly required any painting at all. Whereas with the aircraft, there's quite a bit of painting involved. 
you got a lot to do in the cockpit. Uh, maybe not a lot, but you've got a, a lot of detail to do in the cockpit. You've got, you know, the landing gear is always a different color than the fuselage. Usually, landing gear stuff is white, at least on American planes. Um, jet, the engines, different color. Just in contrast, I found painting the tank was like nothing compared to painting a plane. The most detailed, the, the longest it took me to paint on the plane, tank was uh, painting the wheels. And there was nothing, though, they're just black. I can't even say it was intricate work or anything like that. It's just what it was. And now uh, there's these things that go on the top, but I will wait for those. Those are going to be like last. And that's it. Um, this guy here, I can paint that little square part black since I already have the black in my brush. I'm using the wrong brush for it. I should be using my tiny detail brush. But I can just go back later and clean up my mistake after repair. Okay, clean off my brush. And clean this off. Yeah, I'll be back. dry and then done now what I can do is paint those three things green I can do that without being too intrusive on them There's one.
So that's done. So that's this one. This one here. Let's see. Come on, focus. There we go. That one's done. And then this one again has that green in the center there. And those are done for now. Seats might be dry enough now I can assemble them. And if not, then I will just get a whole bunch of paint all over my fingers. So there's two sides there. Get my glue. Sort of be better to do a glue on the side piece, maybe. seat with its parts. Next. Which one do I use here? Not that thing. This one. Okay. Amazing how easy it goes together when you know how it goes together, right? This one didn't want to cooperate very much. But 
it is now. Done. I kind of want to leave the tops off until I've painted them in a little more detail and then put the tops on because these loops I don't know if you can, if you can see it in the contrast of my shirt these loops here and here those are supposed to be striped black and brown is it brown? no, black and yellow black and yellow stripes around them because those are the ones that they they pull to I think it ejects the seat. I don't know if it ejects the seat or if it's that's for their parachute. Um, but anyway, they're supposed to pull those and they're supposed to have the black and yellow stripes on them. So I kind of want to do that first. Like I'll just paint them yellow and then I'll just take my tiny brush and go with little black stripes around them and uh, <clears throat> do that for those. But that's going to be a lot easier to do with this just in my hand like that doing this rather than having it on the seat where i can't really if it's on there i can no longer really easily get underneath of it and do the detail right so i think i'll just leave them off for now i think what i might do is because i'm gonna have to get going soon here i might I'll do the brown, I'll finish this, I'll finish the brown off, and I'll finish the black, and then we're going to call it a night, and we'll continue on another day. <clears throat> a little bit of progress so far, not too much, but it's not a race, so it doesn't matter too much. If I only get a little bit done in one day. I need to paint that are on here. That's another thing I've seen with some of those photo etching kits is that they come with the seat belts for you to actually put on here. So you actually have like real metal latches and stuff. It's one of those things where if you want to have the model that detailed, that's up to you. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Is that the kind of detail I'm interested in? I don't think so. Um, I don't need to have my models that detailed because, you know, <clears throat> at the end of the day, the model might go sit on a shelf and it's going to sit on that shelf and you're not going to ever really pick it up and examine it um, to see the level of detail on it. You'll see it from two feet away, one foot at the closest and it's like okay so if you can tell this detail from two feet away then that's that's worth doing you know um, but if it's something you can't tell that you know you spent 20 minutes detailing this one piece unless you grab that thing and put a magnifying glass on it I don't find that's worth doing. 
I mean, you can get a sense of pride out of that. You know you did that, and you did that, and you'd be proud of it, the fact that you did that accomplishment. But, beyond that, it's just not my thing. Whether good or bad, that's just not mine. It's not me. There we go. The brown is done. <clears throat> now we will move on to the black. <clears throat> I suppose I could have done the tops of those things brown, because they're supposed to be brown. is really done now. tricky elements where you want enough on your brush to get in all the detail but not so much on your brush that it's just a huge layer of paint that drowns out all the detail because it is possible to put it on so thick that you can't even tell the detail on there the whole purpose, right? Here we go. That side's down. process. Okay. That's it for now. I'll have to touch up a couple little corners on that later. That one's done.
almost done. Let's go this side to do. And this is done. Okay. That's it. to leave that to dry and we'll continue another time I think um, if I do have a little more time tonight I will touch up the a little bit of gray on this piece but I'm not sure if I'm gonna have the time tonight to do it I might have to just continue next time um, that's where we are so far um, that's about it. There's not much to do. I still have to do the touch up on these little pieces that go on top of the seat. I can put the instrument clusters into the main part of the cockpit. And, uh, yeah. So I think what I'll do is I will continue on this maybe tomorrow or something like that. And... We can move on.